another awesome video. We're back and we're talking about Volumio again. This time, not as a hi-fi component, but more in a background situation. You know, if you have outdoor speakers, speakers around the pool, speakers in the ceiling, whatever, wouldn't it be great if you could be at a party and anybody without installing any app could just use maybe a QR code or an IP address, scan it, and then boom, they've got access to Volumio. We've talked about in other videos, all the cool stuff you can do with this, you know, playing music, basically. There's even a volume control, so you can control the volume. So Volumio is really almost a one-stop shop, but the thing it can't do is power up your receiver. In my case, I have a Yamaha receiver. I still have to go find this app on my phone and power it up. Not a huge problem, but we're going to solve that today with a plug-in. Here's how it works. I simply start playing music in Volumio. You'll see I have a little pop-up that says, hey, I'm powering on your audio receiver. Powers up the receiver automatically. And when we're done playing, we simply stop the music and the receiver powers down. It's just a simple bit of automation we've added, and we're gonna show you how we did that. Plugins allow you to add your own code to Volumio to do stuff. You wanna explain the code for them? Um, I don't know. All right, well, <laughs> anyway, I just put a screen that lets you put some stuff about your receiver, and then it turns the receiver on and off. So here's, here's how I code it. On the left, you got the Visual Studio code window where you write the JavaScript. And on the right, you see the Volumio window. I'm just using a little test Volumio that I can restart without causing any problems. And then down at the bottom, you see the WinSCP file transfer utility I use to transfer files over. Sounds simple, right? Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, so after I make a code change, what I do is I copy the latest JavaScript files over to Volumio. Java. JavaScript. It's a little different. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to get into too many specifics here, but the workflow is basically you copy the files over, you run a command or two to install your plugin files into a certain folder, and then you run a command to reset Volumio and it reloads, and then you can test it. I don't really want to release this code because it's only specific to my Yamaha receiver, but it is fairly simple. Um, so if you have a receiver that's on the network and you can send it a command, all you're doing is receiving events from Volumio and responding to them. So. In this case, uh, I'm going to send a power up event. Uh, the Yamaha receiver receives XML, and that also, uh, this log file that you see in SSH lets me see how my plugin is doing. And I think I'll highlight here there's a message that says Yamaha, that XML right there is something I sent to power up the receiver. It's very simple, very simple coding. Uh, maybe took, uh, you know, just a couple of hours and just makes uh, kind of uh, makes it a lot better experience uh, when you start up the music. Everything is well documented on their website. You kind of have to set up your Volumio. And in this case, you go to the sort of the dev web page, you enable SSH, which enables you to then connect with SSH or PuTTY. And you can log into your Volumio as sort of a command prompt and you can start doing some things. But it's all documented on the Volumio website. And if you're into coding and you know a little bit of JavaScript, you can get this stuff working pretty easily. And of course, there are a lot of plugins that already exist. and you can even publish your plugin. I'm not going to publish this one because I don't really want to support it. But anyway, that's, that is the development process in a nutshell. So just to kind of wrap this up, let's, here's the point of view from the receiver. You hit play. It checks the uh, state of the receiver and turns it on. You see the little pop-up there. And then uh, if I come back here, give the speakers a second to click in. There you go. If I hit pause, uh, what I do is I wait a minute and then check to see if the receiver is still on and after a minute it'll turn it back off but anyway that's how this works i hope you found this interesting um that's about it we will see you next time see you next time for another awesome video bye, bye. <laughs>